are in your studio in, in, in England where you do your your preparation for your gigs so your the interactive part of your presentations is very popular would you like to tell me a bit about how you work them it's a funny thing isn't it singing uh, most people uh, would probably rather stick pins in their eyes than sing uh, it's not something that most of us normally do in our everyday lives and yet it's something we all did when we were tiny children naturally effortlessly as, as uh, organically as breathing or eating and yet somehow we lose that um, through, through the years as we grow up and I think that's a great shame because there is almost nothing as good as being lost in and a fundamental part of a great ocean of glorious harmonic sound. It's an almost unique situation where everyone in the room singing is of equal importance. No one is more important than anyone else. Everyone is both a supporter and a leader. And it's about just diving in with, with, with both feet. Uh, I mean, I genuinely think it's not facetious to, to suggest that if all parliaments in the world had to sing a little in harmony every morning before they conducted their day's business, things would flow. You know, it's great cardiovascular exercise. It just feels incredible. And I can tell you, your delegates may well think, oh, no, we're not singers. We wouldn't want to do this. I guarantee I can get them singing in glorious, full-throated, four-part harmony in a matter of minutes, and they will feel extraordinary. So could you give us an example of a tune that you might get people to sing? You play it on the piano. Yeah, there's a beautiful old uh, Tudor folk song, actually. It's a thing you need to know about Englishness, um, if you didn't already, uh, that we're fundamentally a melancholic race. We, uh, the glass is always a little empty. You know, we're the Eeyore of Europe, really, witness Brexit. You know, we think uh, that um, the world is, is a faintly dismal place, um, that our food isn't great, our weather's not great. But, you know, we've never had a revolution, not as such. We kind of put up, we quite like the sweet state of melancholy, and I've got this beautiful tune. Now that can work in a four-part round. So in other words, you've got a glorious four-part harmony going once everyone has learnt that little simple tune. It's wistful, it's deeply melancholic, but it's so full of heart and a burning kind of passion and a togetherness and a, a warmth in a kind of quiet melancholy. It's gorgeous. And how does it demonstrate the themes that you speak to about trust and teamwork and authenticity? So um, there's nothing more authentic or no more kind of st strong kind of unplanned symbol of your authentic self than singing. It's one of those moments where in a funny way you lay your soul bare. Uh, so there's a deeply authentic element to singing, you know, there's no hiding. Singing is, is kind of one of those basic forms of who we are and how we are. In terms of trust, singing in a group, in harmony like that, is all about supporting each other and it's about trusting each other and of course most importantly it's about trusting yourself. You do have a voice, you do have a resonance, you do have value to add. This is the glorious thing about music making. It is pure democracy in action. That there may be someone with a principal line and the others are supporting and then someone else takes it over and then that person who first had it becomes a supporter. And so it's constantly, the narrative, the kind of main narrative arc is constantly moving around the room. So you're either supporting, you're the main event, or you're somewhere in between the two. So it's a delicious sense of humanity in our old terms. Can you give us a flavour of what the delegates take away? What, 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 what are the responses you get from, from singing together like that? I can't overestimate how this blows people away. People who walked into the room not in a million years thinking they were going to have to sing in a massive choir as part of the process. They walk out, of course, first of all, a bit like they've had a good workout because it is good cardiovascular exercise. It's uh, as healthy and therapeutically beneficial as going for a jog or working out at the gym. But it's got this added value that you've got this sense of connectivity. It's like everyone suddenly grows cosmic antennae. They are connected to each other in the service of something unutterably beautiful and to which they have all had a primary contribution. So they walk out of the room a little bit on air with, you know, blood in their faces. They look slightly transfigured. I mean, there's nothing not to love about it. So they have a kind of physical experience of the, the concepts that you're talking about. They have a physical experience of the concepts that we're talking about and they're doing something they never thought they could do, which they never normally do in their daily lives, making the most sensationally beautiful music. I mean, it's a bit like when you go and watch British football. 
it's a bit like that, only even better, because that is about being lost in a vast ocean of sound, like 80, 90,000 people, all singing at the top of their lungs. Well, this can work with 20 people in a room or 5,000 in a room. You know, it's just delicious. And, and people are titillated, they're delighted, they're amused, and most importantly, surprised by the experience. Thank you.